What if I told you that the Vikings could sign Brandon Scherf, three new defensive backs, make progress on their cap debt, and do it all without having any cap casualties at all? Because that's what we're going to do here on the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. You can find the show on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. And thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of today. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Today on the show, it's this is the finalized continuity cap plan. So I kind of been working on this over the last like week or so of the show. So if you missed a little bit, this is it's great. This is the perfect one to come listen to. Um, so basically, there are three possible things that can happen with Kirk Cousins. We've all been talking about this ad nauseum, right? They could extend him to get his cap hit down. They could trade him away and it's like start over, or they could like weirdly have him play as a forty-five million dollar bridge quarterback while they develop a rookie, and it's a little bit of a throwaway twenty twenty-two to get out from under the contract track kind of thing they could do that that's a weirder one i don't know how much attention we're going to pay to it um but the the other two i kind of want to do like dueling cat plans so let's do one where we we keep him and we we do what the vikings have said they are going to do which is build a contender around Kirk Cousins and say, like, let's let's try to do that let's try to maneuver this but also do it in a responsible way and so even though I, this is the, the side of the coin I do not fall on, I still want to make the plan, if only to prove the point that the cap is not the issue here, that you don't have to say, well, I like Kirk, but the contract. If the contract is your problem, I want you to walk away from this show saying, okay, the contract is no longer my problem. If Cousins himself and his level of play, and you say, hey, Cousins can't lead us to a Super Bowl, like if that's your problem, there's another episode, I think that was last week, that's for you, or maybe two weeks ago, that's for you. Um, But for this time, this is all going to be about, look, if you want to build a team around Kirk Cousins, if you know what you're doing with the cap, and we do here at Lockdown Vikings, we know what we're doing, all right, We, we, we know what we're looking at. If we know what we're doing, we can get around it. And I'm going to prove that proof of concept here to you. I tweeted out uh, what the roster would be earlier on Sunday when I was working on this. Got a little feedback, incorporated some tweaks from what you guys said. So it's a little different than what I tweeted out if you saw that. So let's get into this a little bit. The rules for what I'm going to do, uh, for one, no cap casualties or trades. I cannot just cut a guy to save cap. Not even like, I kind of want to cut Armin Watts to save two and a half million dollars just because he's a depth dude and that seems like a lot for that. I, I can't even do that. Not not allowed. No trades or anything too. I can't trade Adam Thielen to save cap space. This is all without doing any of that. Um, I, must, I must at least try to fill out every need as we have laid them out before. So that's Jack linebacker. That's the defensive end outside linebacker hybrid. You, you see in a lot of three, four defenses, uh, the Bradley Chubb role is what I've been calling it. The Sam linebacker. This is like what Anthony Barr would be the will linebacker. This would be like an Eric Wilson esque role. I need three corners and I need a safety opposite Harrison Smith. And on top of that, I need a center. Um, I'm not going to just anoint Garrett Bradbury with the role. He's not a scheme fit anymore. And most people want to cut him anyways. Um, and I need a right guard. Only Udo ain't cutting it. So those are my needs and I need to get somebody for all of it. If it ends up being a current player and a competition, I do do that a couple times. So we'll deal with that. But I, I need a plan that improves upon that position. And what I would need to do is create a roster that's better than the one that competed in 2021 around Kirk Cousins, around that skill set, around the new coaches with the scheme fits. We need one that is better than that roster. They were eight and nine. Let's see if we can't add two or three wins and turn these guys into a real team. You got to take seriously in January. It's also mock draft Monday. So I did incorporate that. And there is some rookie contribution here. I used pro football networks, mock simulator. We'll get to that when we get to that. Um, I used over the caps cal- cal- cap calculator to help me do a lot of this. So thank you to them. And speaking of over the cap, I used Brad Spielberger's prices from the PFF free agency module that they have on pro football Focus's site. 
website. He has like projected contract prices for all of those people. And I just blindly went with whatever contract he said they would should get in terms of what amounts these guys cost. So I wasn't sitting there saying, but I think I can negotiate him down and blah, blah, blah. No, whatever Spielberger said, whatever he projected, I'm going to say that's the actual deal. And then all I can do is structure it the best way I know how. And on top of all of this, I want to keep the cap flexible in future years. I do end up with a projected number over the 2023 cap at the end of this, but I made sure to put in enough cap flexibility where when we get to this point next year, it's not really difficult to decide and we have 10,000 different ways we can get under the cap and we kind of just choose which one uh, we're most comfortable with and, and it should be pretty easy. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Those are my rules. So, we already started with a Hunter extension and a Kirk Cousins extension that uh, we have already talked about. The Daniel Hunter extension, I believe, is three years. I think it adds like 70-ish million in new money. Um, the Kirk Cousins extension is 40 million a year. It adds two years and it utilizes void years and intends for a lot of restructures down the road. But we're not we don't need to commit to those restructures. Um, and th that is all about what I think. Um, those those will will look like that gets us under the cap. We are also extending Anthony Barr for um, six million dollars in new money um, into his two void years. So it's three million a year. And I think considering his age and his health and stuff like that, I do think you're going to be able to get a pretty good deal like that on him, even though he's a very well respected player. Um, so it actually ends up saving a little bit of cap space this year and adding a little bit of cap space uh, or adding a cap burden into 2023. Um, and then we did a big restructure on Harrison Smith. We did a big restructure on Dalvin Cook, and that's all we ended up needing. So that means Michael Pierce's contract untouched, Dalvin Tomlinson's untouched, Eric Kendricks is untouched. I'm not trading any of those guys away for cap space. I'm not doing any pay cut stuff. The, the team might do some like pay cut, you know, hey, we're going to cut you if you don't agree to this pay cut, that kind of thing. I'm not allowing myself that tool because it feels kind of cheaty in this exercise. So not doing any of that. But that is all the cap that I'm going to need to do everything I, I'm saying here. Um, a few, a couple of restructures, a couple of extensions, keeping a lot of the key players uh, like Dalvin Cook and, and Daniil Hunter and Harrison Smith like in-house, people that these coaches are excited to work for and keeping them all in-house. That is all I need to do for the cap. I think that ended up getting me like $35 million or something like that. The actual max number doesn't matter because we're going to spend it all right away anyways. Um, but I'm, I'm solving a lot of issues in free agency, but I'm trying not to do as many one-year deals. There's some, but I'm trying to do a little bit of like, and then I'm signing a 27-year-old player who's going to be here and be the guy, and I'm, and I'm trying to get it through free agency so that I can address these needs without spending too much draft capital, and that way I can save my draft capital in future years to um, you know, try to come up with a more homegrown succession plan because what I really would love to be is a more homegrown team, kind of like what the Bucks are, where you know there's a, there's a lot of players that like they drafted when like that 2020 Bucks team that won the Super Bowl. It's a lot of players that they drafted and kind of grew from. All. I would love to get to that point. We're papering it over with free agents in the meantime. All right, are we all there? Are we all ready and on the same page? Cool. I will get into who the actual free agents are in just a bit, but. If you want to uh, maybe make a wager on stuff like where Kirk Cousins will play, I think he's like plus 350 to be a Brown. That's kind of wild on Bet Uh So you can bet on that. You can bet do the same thing like Aaron Rodgers. You can bet on futures, like who's going to win what division and stuff like that. Or you can bet on basketball. College journeys are coming around. So go bet on those. You can bet on golf, tennis, hockey, uh, MMA. You can even play your favorite casino games. It is your one-stop shop for all things Grambling. They have a really cool player prop builder where you can like put together all all your weird parlays. Uh, I know people love to do that. You can put together uh, some live bets as uh, on their on their live betting thing. That that is a great part of their page is betonline.net. So go to betonline.net. Get yourself a Grambling at Bet Online, where the game starts. Hey, so we're on YouTube uh, here at the Lockdown Podcast Network, including the Lockdown NFL Podcast, which is kind of the flagship show of the Lockdown NFL Network. It's everybody. I'm on it on Tuesdays. So go check me out on Tuesdays. And sometimes on Mondays, we live stream it. So go check out the Lockdown NFL YouTube page. And you can come chat with me and Ross live as we do the show. Uh, let's continue with this little off-season plan. All right. So I made as much cap as I was going to make. Let me kick it off, I guess, by showing you what I did on the offensive line, and then we'll uh, switch to the defense. So... Garrett Bradbury might not be a scheme fit if they don't do 100% wide zone, which I really don't think Kevin O'Connell wants to do. That's just not the kind of coach that he is. He, he believes in more multitude and what he wants to kind of have a more varied approach. And Garrett Bradbury is not a varied center. And some people don't even think he's good in a wide zone. Whatever, not going to fight about it today. Let's put him in a competition. 
I mean, he, you can't save a dime by cutting him anyways, and I'm not even allowed to cut him if I wanted to. So we'll put him in a camp competition. And if he wins, he wins. And if he doesn't, he's a backup. Like, then that's fine. So I brought in Austin Blythe, who, according to the, the Spielberger amounts, only costs $1.13 million. Um, he was good enough center for, for the Los Angeles Rams, played with Kevin O'Connell in that scheme. So whatever O'Connell wants to do, he should be pretty familiar with it in the terminology and stuff. And uh, is he better than Garrett Bradbury? We don't need to answer that right now. We'll put him in camp and we'll split first team reps and whoever takes the job takes the job. Works for me and it's a pretty cheap way to at least get a, con- uh, a like a contingency plan for if Garrett Bradbury is just like a total mess going into the offseason uh, or like doesn't improve at all. Uh, right guard, I you said, heard it at the beginning of the show. I went out. And I got Brandon Scherf. I wanted an exciting name here. I don't want this to just be another time where we go get bargain bin dudes for two million a pop and then go like put together a seven and 10 team. No, I want people that are exciting. And here's the deal with Scherf. Everything that Kevin O'Connell has talked about when he talks about building around Kirk Cousins, he's asked every time he goes into the media. And what he says is we need to protect him and make him feel protected. That's O-line, right? And I think a lot of that is like a schematic point where he's kind of talking about rhythm and making the quarterback not feel like skittish back there and making him feel like taking care of him and stuff. But like, look, part of that, yeah, is like not lining Ole Udo up all year. So we're just going to go get the best dude. And that's really expensive. And if you're uncomfortable with that, I got a backup plan. Lake and Tomlinson's about half as expensive as this. And you can go put more money into a defensive thing or something because we do go a little cheapo there. Um, but look, Wyatt Davis, Oli Udo, enough of this. Just get Brandon Scherf, go in, get a dude that is like very good at the sport and and that's it. He's three years, 50 million, according to Brad Spielberger. Um, So I kind of scaled that a little bit. It was, I think his cap hit in the first year is 15 million and then 17 and 18 is I think how I did it. Um, And I used a little bit of signing bonus stuff to spread that out as well. So he gets a lot of money up front. So it doesn't feel like it scales to him. And I think 30 million of this deal is guaranteed as well. But this is one of those deals that you could restructure, add void years to. You could definitely lower this cap hit later if you're worried about 2023, which is starting to get dicey. So that's all I'm doing on the offense. Otherwise, I'm keeping the receivers the same. I'm pretty happy with Justin Jefferson, not allowing myself to like get rid of Thielen or anything. So Jefferson, Thielen, KJ Osborne, I think that's a good core. And you get Irv Smith back and stuff, Dalvin Cook, CJ Ham, no, nothing to deal with there. And I'm not allowing myself to change things from Kirk Cousins. This is a build around Kirk Cousins plan. I, mean, I wouldn't trade him. Let's move on to the defense. Um, so I did keep Anthony Barr. He's going to play Sam linebacker. I talked about that before. That's a guy that needs to be able to set the edge sometimes. It's a guy that gets sent on blitzes a lot. So that's the, it's what we like from Anthony Barr, right? Right. We want him to kind of be off the ball, but then blitz. So we don't want him going up against tackles. It's not what he does. I want him to be confusing protections, blitzing, stuff like that. And keeping him in the building saves cap on the whole because of the weird way that void years work. We've explained that in the past. So go find a past episode, but Basically, it's like he's getting cut in the middle of a contract and signing bonus would accelerate, like the dead cap hit you would incur if you, say, cut Michael Pierce right now. Basically, the same thing's happening with Anthony Barr. And so the extension is, is it's like the default state is cutting him and the extension is saying, oh, I'm not going to cut you. Whereas like with Michael Pierce, the default state is keeping him and then cutting him would be like the actual button to put. It's the active move. Um, if that's all confusing to you, don't worry about it. Just Keep it in the back of your head. Keeping Anthony Barr saves cap. He's not the expensive guy that he was back in 2018. Um, then at the will linebacker spot, this was a little bit tough. Uh, the free agent pool is not great. I, I don't know. the Some of the draft board like didn't fall great for me there. We'll get to that in Mock Draft Monday. And also the Jack, we're, we'll get to that in Mock Draft Monday. So let's talk about corners a little bit. So when I first put this out, I basically was like, I just kind of kept the same corner group because it was cheap and I needed to. And I also wanted to bring in a, a cooler safety. People really didn't like that. So I was like, okay, fair enough. Uh, I'll, I'll re, retool the way that I did the secondary. So the way I did the secondary, I did bring Patrick Peterson back. Um, there are young corners in this room and I like the way he mentors them. And I, I'm slotting him in right now as CB1. Obviously that could change in camp. Um, one year, $6 million deal. And then uh, I brought in Darius Williams, who is cornerback two in L.A. If he can be more than cornerback two is very much a question mark. If he can, great. If not, you know, it's like beat Patrick Peterson for that. If you can beat Patrick Peterson, you deserve it. If you can't beat Patrick Peterson, you probably don't deserve it. So um, he needed a three year, $33 million deal. 
uh, according to the Spielberger stuff. I, I backloaded that just a little bit with some signing bonus things. So he only costs, I had to sneak him in. He was the last guy I, I, I brought in. Um, so I kind of had to sneak him in and he only costs 5 million against the cap in the first year. And then it's all a little bit more backloaded. Um, and there's a lot of signing bonus stuff. So it's not quite as flexible, but this is kind of the only contract I did that for. So I feel pretty comfortable with it. And it is still cuttable in those years. Like it would just be inefficient and kind of awkward to do that, but it's cuttable if you like had to. Um, and then for nickel corner, again, I originally did Mackenzie Alexander, which was just kind of a lazy move on my part because Bryce Callahan has almost the exact same cost, uh, at least for, for Spielberger's prices. He's a Broncos guy. He's familiar with Donatel and he's a very good corner. Bryce Callahan's a very good slot corner. I really, really like him. So um, he's two year, $5 million deal. And Mackenzie Alexander is one year, $2 million deal. So it's like 2 million a year or two and a half million a year. Let me get two years of a guy that's familiar with the system. And honestly, two and a half million for like a quality starter that's going to be on the field for 80% of snaps. Like, yeah, let's do that. I like that. Um, and then at safety, this is the first competition I'll tell you about. So a lot of people, when I, when I posted the first version of this, and I think I brought Quandre Diggs. Um, as a, as a bigger free agent instead, people were like, well, why would you get that? Have Cam Bynum start and get another corner. I don't think Cam Bynum has like earned a job uncontested. Like he, I think he's earned the right to compete with someone for a job. So how about I just go get somebody for him to compete with? And that guy to me was Deshaun Elliott. He played in Baltimore under Wink Martindale's system, which is not Vic Fangio's system, but the, the, the role is similar enough. There's a lot of robber zones. There's a lot of covering tight ends. It's a lot of the important and hard stuff that the safeties do in Fangio's system is the same as the stuff that safeties do in, in the Raven system, but it still would be a little getting used to. And he did make a lot of mental mistakes in that Raven system. So I'm not a hundred percent confident in him as like, a, let's bring him in and make him the starter. But I, I don't mind making him compete with a guy like Bynum who has shown a little bit. So let's have those two guys compete for the role. It, it still feels a little bit like a roster hole to me, but it absolutely has a chance to improve upon what Xavier Woods did. And this is kind of the cost of going out and doing things like getting Brandon Scherf and Darius Williams, who are a little bit more big ticket guys. So those are my free agents. Um, I'm going to get to the draft in a, in a little bit and then talk about kind of the overall stuff. Um, but that that's the free agency. And then we'll go over like the actual roster as a whole. But first, let me talk to you about the best tasting protein bar on the planet. It's Built Bar. Built Puff is what I really am like jazzed on right now. It's a marshmallowy kind. And I don't know what they're doing over there with the collagen protein that makes it taste like you're you're eating a, a chocolate covered marshmallow bar. But that's what it tastes like. And it's got like four grams of sugar in it and like 130 calories. Like it's totally the kind of thing you can munch on at 3 a.m. when you're feeling weird and not feel like you're totally throwing yourself off the wagon. They also have all their, their classic flavors, chocolate caramel, chocolate uh, rat raspberry, chocolate orange, if you're into that and all sorts of stuff like that. So head on over to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and you can get 15% off of your order, whatever you get at built.com. Moving right along here, it is Monday, that means we're doing Mock Draft Monday. I am doing this particular Mock Draft Monday in the context of this particular uh, off-season plan, and I'm going to do mock drafts with the other off-season plans too, whether it's a Monday or not, but this mock draft Monday I'm doing in sequence with this one, so keep that in mind context-wise. I am, however, sticking to my rule that I can't take anybody in this mock draft that I've taken in a previous mock draft Monday. Um, so that rules out like Derek Stingley, and I think I've taken uh, Tyler Linden Linderbaum before, and those guys, I'm not allowed to do it if I've taken them in a previous one. Um, so in round one, what ended up happening is that rule is it's starting to get tough, which means it's probably time to reset it where everybody available. I mean, David Ajabo was there. Um, Chris Olave was there. Uh, Stingley was there. Everybody that I could have wanted. Um, Devin Lloyd, I think I've taken before. Everybody I could have wanted is taken. Um, or has been taken in a previous mock draft Monday. So I thought, okay, what does this mean in the simulation? Let's say the board, this is just the worst board, and all those guys were actually gone, and the guys who did fall were guys I didn't want anyways. What would I do? Well, I would try to trade down. So I figured, okay, let's just let's just kind of utilize the rule here and say, well, this board doesn't look good then, and that means that I should trade down. So I did that. I traded down with the Saints. I moved down six spots, picked up an extra fourth. I'm only doing the first two round, the first three rounds here, so I didn't end up picking that fourth. Um, but I, I picked up an extra fourth round pick, and then at pick 18, which is where I pick now, um, I selected Jermaine Johnson out of FSU. He's a very versatile player. He's a big playmaker type for FSU. And I think he's perfect for that Jack linebacker position. Now with the Jack linebacker, what I kind of figured was, look, we can either have Daniel Hunter play it or we can have someone else play it. And that kind of depends on what sort of edge rusher we pick up later. 
if you get like a sort of tweener type, um, then put that guy at Jack and put Daniel Hunter at a more traditional end. Think, you know, Von Miller versus Bradley Chubb role here. Um, but if you get a more Von Miller-esque guy that's like a really good pass rushing specialist and really should specialize in that, then I guess you could put Daniel Hunter in the jack spot, but I do find that a little less efficient. Look, Daniel Hunter is an absolute terror on the line of scrimmage. I do not want to give the tackle the relief of thinking he's about to block Daniel Hunter and then not having to block Daniel Hunter. Like, could you imagine lining Daniel Hunter up off the ball and the sigh of relief that every offensive lineman would would feel doing that if, if he only rushed like 75% of the time, that would be insane to me. So you can still put Hunter at that Jack position, but I do think that's a little inefficient. Um, and I don't want to do that. And now we have Jermaine Johnson, who I think would perfect would be perfectly for that Jack position. So you got those kind of dual edge rushers, Jermaine Johnson and Daniel Hunter. And those are like your two guys now. Um, and then uh, we still have a problem at will. This is the only need I have not filled yet. I've at least got a competition at safety. I got my three corners. I've got Anthony Barr's my Sam. I've got my Jack. I, I still need a will linebacker. And I didn't feel great about what was there on round two for that. Um, and we had already gotten a bunch of corners. I totally could have taken a corner to be like a succession plan to Patrick Peterson. And I think that would have been reasonable. But you know what? I got greedy. And there were quarterbacks out, and I kind of just want to talk about the quarterbacks, so I want to talk about Carson Strong. Uh, Carson Strong is the guy I ended up taking. There were a few quarterbacks there. Um, Kenny Pickett was there. He's off limits. I've taken him before. Desmond Ritter was also there. He's somebody a lot of people would have wanted instead, and sure, yeah, that's totally valid. I, I took Carson Strong um, out of Nevada. He is... Um, He's a very, we see this guy a lot. This is a quarterback we see in the the, the draft a ton. Um, he's very athletic. He's got great arm strength. He's got big size and he's got a, you know more run around than a guy his size should have. But he like struggles to read safeties and he collapses under pressure a lot. And he's totally not ready to start year one. And he doesn't have to start year one in this particular case. He might not even have to start year two. He's just another developmental guy. Let's just bring him along alongside Mond and see if one of these guys turns into a better quarterback. And if one of these guys surprises, then great. We've got like a succession plan. We can get rid of Kirk. We can save a bunch of money. Um, and even in the new contract that I signed Kirk to in this particular scenario, we can still totally trade the dude. Like it's not a bunch of signing bonus. We, it, he, it gets harder the more you restructure him, but that would be a decision you make next off season. Anyways, you would make that restructure decision after you've decided whether or not you're trading him. So it doesn't like, it, it's still totally flexible. So look, he's absolutely not safe to start year one. There's no way we would start him year one. He would totally do the Kellen Mond thing and just recede to the shadows, bake in the background, and we'd forget about him for most of the season. I think that's a good way to, to attack that uh, with, a, with a player like that. Um, but you could you could have gone with Desmond Ritter or, or Kenny Pickett if you don't want to abide by my rules. Um, I'm making I'm going ultra hard mode here. Um, so you redshirt year, you hope for the best. That brings us to round three, where all I have left is a Will linebacker. And thankfully, available in round three was uh, one of the coverage linebackers from Georgia, Quay Walker. Um, Quay Walker is totally a rangy type dude. He's a lot rangier than he should be for his size. And I think that makes him a really exciting fit for a Fangio defense. If you remember the way I broke down the Fangio defense, the one thing I wanted you to remember about it was that everybody kind of does every role and that's how they make it complex. If you are the will backer, sometimes you play what the Sam backer does in that coverage. Sometimes you play what the Jack guy does in that coverage. Sometimes you're blitzing. Sometimes you need to back off and play like a robber zone, you know, 15 yards down the field. Like you have to do a lot of different things. And he does have, he's got, he has that versatility. That versatility is kind of his claim to fame. Um, he's a, a weird size and he's available down here because he's a little clunky and his movement isn't great. And, and so that's not necessarily ideal. So I'm having him compete. So the will linebacker competition is, is probably the, the, the whole, I, I didn't feel or I felt the, the least confident in is the, the single roster spot. Troy Dye, Blake Lynch, Chad Surratt, Quay Walker. One of these guys has to be a dude, right? Like somebody's got to work out in there. So we're just going to have big open four-way competition between all of them. And somebody's got to take the will, the will backer position. If, you know, one of the second or third year guys really steps up, that'd be super sick. Um, if, if Walker's great as a rookie, that's super sick. Um, somebody there has to be good. And so that's where we're at. I mean, if you look at the roster needs we kind of laid out, at center, we have a competition between Garrett Bradbury and Austin Blythe. At uh, right guard, we have Brandon Scherf. That's squared away. 
At uh, the cornerback positions, we have Darius Williams, Patrick Peterson, Bryce Callahan. I think that's a much improved group. Um, at safety, we have Cameron Bynum competing with Deshaun Elliott. I, I don't know if I feel great about either of those guys, but I like that You know, there is a chance that if one of them sucks, the other could be good, and so they kind of cover each other that way. We got that big open competition at will. I don't feel excellent about that. And, of course, you have um, Anthony Barr coming back. So that is is, I think, a better roster than the one that went 8-9 in 2021. And here's the deal with all of this. Here's where my cap is at at the end. After all of these moves, 2022 is at 10 million in cap space. So I've got enough room left to sign my draft class and have a little contingency. 10 million is about my rule of thumb for what you need to have by draft night. You have to have 10 million in space available or ready to make available um, so that you can sign your class and stuff. So I've got that. I am slated to be 13 million over in 2023. But listen to some of these things. I could do a Kirk Cousins restructure, restructure that gets me under immediately. That was kind of the plan there. If you're uncomfortable with that, you could restructure some of Daniel Hunter's contract. You could restructure a little bit of everybody's contract. You could do some work with Kendrick's or Thielen's or Harrison Smith's. Some of these guys might be old. You got Michael Pearson, Anthony Barr under contract. If Barr's uh, contract would be a zero sum, you wouldn't be able to um, save really much money on that at all. Um, but you've got Pierce's contract, Barr's contract. You've got a bunch of players over 30. If any of these guys is, are, are old, you've got the Sheriff contract I signed is very restructurable. You could make like 50 million with the stroke of a pen. And if any of these guys fall off an age cliff in 2022, they're all really easy to cut. And you take a little bit of dead money. It's not perfectly efficient, but you get a lot of savings out of them. Um, so you can kind of plan around that flexibility and say, I, I can borrow a little bit more from 2023 than we have because we can make more really at a moment's notice and we don't have to decide how we're doing that yet. So you're going to go through all of the 2022 season with a really scary number on the over the cap website, but who cares about that, right? Because you can just make the money whenever you want to. And that's the way the Vikings operate. So I tried to kind of deal with that. But now, I mean, look, you want to protect better protection for Kirk Cousins. You got it. If you think Garrett Bradbury is like the worst dude since Drew Samia, he ain't going to be Austin Blythe out then. So you replaced him with somebody and you got Brandon Scherf. That's all great. Um, the other three guys I think people are mostly happy with. So you, you got that. You still have Justin Jefferson. You're going to have a new scheme and all that stuff. If Kirk Cousins can win a Super Bowl, this is what you have to do with the roster. You have to be aggressive. You have to go get players. You have to borrow a little bit off of future years and be smart about the way you do it so that you can do that without totally destroying yourself in future years. Um, and, and that's the plan. So I am also going to tweet out this new version of the roster in the morning uh, as a way to kind of promo this show. Uh, but hey, I don't think this is the best possible plan. I came up with this in a day. You might be able to do better. I totally think you can do better. So if you think you can do better, do better. Go to the over the cap calculator, do a PFN sim or a TDN sim or whatever. Follow my same rules. You can't be like, I did a great job because I cut Adam Thielen. No, no, no. You got to follow the same rules. But if you can do that and you can do a better job than this, I want to see it. Send it to me at Luke Brown NFL. Take your screenshots. Send them to me. I want to see it. We are going to do the same thing with a version where we trade Kirk Cousins. I, I, we've got to build our way up to that. I want to talk about possible trade partners and what that would look like and stuff. So we're going to kind of shift gears to that now, um, and we'll we'll do that for the rest of the week until news breaks us up. But tomorrow is Twitter Tuesday, so get your Twitter Tuesday questions in. Again, at Luke Brown NFL, at Locked on Vikings on Twitter. Send an email to Locked on Vikings podcast at gmail.com, or there's a Google form in the show notes if you'd rather do that. Um, send that stuff to me, and uh, we'll talk about your questions tomorrow, and I'll see you then here on the Locked on Vikings podcast. And as always, skull.